All right, welcome back. So in the last video, we had edited this particular audio and we had finished the process by applying the different effects. But I have just reopened that unedited audio right now in Audacity. So this is not edited at all. And this time what we'll be doing is we will be doing the exact same process of applying the same effects, but we want to make this a one click process instead of having to spend so much time like we did before. But that time we did that because we were learning what the different effects are. Now that we know that, let's see how to do this in one click by creating what we call as a preset. This was something that we discussed earlier on also. And how you do that in Audacity is you basically have to create something called as a macro. A macro is a predefined series of steps, like a list of steps that you tell Audacity, yes, these are the steps you have to take when I use this particular preset or a macro. So let's see how this process works. So for this, we will have to go over to tools and we have to go to this option that says macro manager. So whenever you basically see this term macro, just you can replace it by a preset, okay? Because preset is usually more popular, the term. It means the same thing. So what we have to do is you can ignore everything. We have to create a new macro because we have our own custom steps here, okay? So we're going to hit new and we can give it a name. Now, this is going to be important if you're dealing with multiple microphones. For example, this sample audio that we had recorded was from what was from the laptop microphone. So what's going to happen is if I give it a name that I can easily remember it by, then anytime I use this microphone again, I can simply know that, yes, I need to now use this particular preset or a macro for a different mic. You can use a different name because the settings and of the effects that we're going to be using might change depending on the mic, right? So this is for the laptop microphone. So I'm going to hit OK. So you can see now we don't have any steps and we have to now enter all the steps. So for this, we'll use the insert function. So what was the first thing that we did to this particular audio? So remember, the first thing that we did was we applied the compressor effect. Remember, we were trying to make the audio more even. So I'm going to hit insert. And here you'll be able to see all the effects that you usually see in the effect menu like we've seen before. So we will now use compressor and we will hit OK. You can also change the settings just like we did with the effect menu here. So if I hit edit by selecting the effect, you'll get that same window that we saw before for compressor. Now remember, we did not change the default settings that time, right? We said, yes, that's fine. And so here we can just simply click now on apply. We don't need to change, but if you had changed any setting, okay, then you can just uh, change that. Then what was the second thing we did to make it more even the audio waveform? We had applied a limiter, right? So we are going to hit again, insert. We're going to search for limiter. You can see it's a long list here. So limiter now again. So we can move this up and down. So this has to be in the correct sequence, okay? So we're going to hit this, uh, select this and hit move down. So this comes after compressor. And for this again, you will hit edit. And remember what was the value that we had used for to cut off those peaks? It was minus three. So we'll just let it be here. And now, every time it's a good practice to just go to end because then when you insert, it automatically comes at the end, okay? What was the next thing that, that we did? Once we had made this even, the audio waveform, we were doing it why? So that we could use the normalize function in a much better way. So we're gonna, so we had used the normalize function, right? So we're gonna hit insert and we will go to normalize. And what was the value that we had selected? So you can see this time it comes below. So what was the value that we had selected? It was minus five. So we're gonna hit apply. So after this, what did we do? We used noise reduction. Now I'm gonna come back to that later because in those videos, we had used the manual approach of noise reduction, which was we sampled, remember from here, we sampled a bit of that noise and then we use noise reduction again to get rid of the noise in the whole audio. So this was a manual process. Something like this is better not to do here because it'll be very, very tough to apply that. Okay, in fact, probably it can't be done. We will still be able to reduce noise by using a very similar setting to the noise removal setting, which is called as a noise gate. So noise gate kind of works more objectively and more automatically. Okay, so I'm just gonna be, since I've not shown you that, uh, how exactly does that work? I'm right now not going to put it here because I just want to show you how this effect works, okay? How does the macro work? And later on, I'll just talk about how noise gate also works so that you can use that 
to get rid of the noise. So right now, let's not use it. So let's skip noise removal. What was the next thing that we did? Remember to get rid of that drilling sound, we had used a low pass filter, right? So let's insert that. So let's go to N, insert, and just go towards L. So here's the low pass filter. What was the value that we used for the low pass filter? Remember it was 1,500 was the cutoff. So it, it's, since we've just done it, I'm get, just guessing that Audacity remembers those values. So it's just putting it here. And then what did we do? We added four decibels of bass and two decibels of treble. So that was for the equalization, right? So let's also do that. Now go to insert and go to bass and treble. Again, go here and I think it's gone. You can see here, bass and treble is set to two. So we don't need to click, right? We know that it's remembering those settings. Finally, remember, because we had made some changes after normalizing, it's a good practice if the audio waveform changes to again just use normalize to set the volume back in case there were some changes. And there were, if you remember, right? There was around a change of 0.5 uh, decibels. So we again will insert the normalize function. And this is completely fine, even if it's a slightly longer process, because ultimately it's becoming a one-click process. So it's not an issue, right? You just need to do it once per mic. So see here, again, we're going to just set this to, just make sure this is at minus five. All right. So this is done. Remember, I'm, I've just deliberately skipped the noise reduction. I'm going to show you how to do that later on also. So right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to hit save so it's going to save it to laptop microphone and then just close it and then it's very simple to apply this this whole process now will become one click because i'm just going to double click on this and then go to tools go to apply macro and this name is going to come here so if i now hit laptop microphone we're going to get exactly the same thing that we got after such a long time last time around because obviously we were learning so just Let's just play this. Of course, the noise is still going to be there. So I'm just going to be talking about that. But apart from that, everything is now. This is a sample audio recording, which is coming from the built-in. All right. So you can see it exactly sounds similar. Just a bit of that noise. So how do we correct that? Well, first of all, we again need to do the same thing. We need to find an, an area where I was not talking and there was a gap and we could hear the noise. So remember this was that area. So even this much is fine. But this time we're doing something different. We're basically doing this to just notice the volume here. Okay, so I'm just gonna play this back. So this is somewhere around, you can say between minus 36 and minus 33. And that's all we need to know because how the noise gate function works is slightly more different. You can go down here and you're gonna see noise gate this time. And here, only two settings you need to just understand. One is gate threshold. So it's asking us, what is that le level of volume below which the noise should be removed? So we don't want, we want to avoid anything that is of a good volume, right? So what was this volume that we noticed for somewhere between minus 36, minus 33? So here, what we can do is we can just give it minus 33 because we know for sure anywhere I'm speaking is going to be louder than minus 33. So this is not going to get affected because this is, we've set the threshold level. It's only going to affect the noise because we know that the noise is more, uh, it's going, you know, less than, sorry, minus 33. And the other thing you just have to, the other setting you have to just pay attention to is the level reduction. So the level reduction is basically then your audacity, audacity is asking us, okay, okay, Kush, it's only going to apply here, but then how much should the volume uh, get reduced? To? So I, I usually leave this at like minus 20 decibels. That's more than enough because we know that yes, it's so less that it, it is going to flatten this out, right? So we can hit apply right now and you're going to actually see something similar happen to what happened when we clicked on noise reduction. So you can see again we've got those flat lines and this is going to be devoid of any noise. So let's just play this. This is a sample audio recording which is coming from the bit. Right, so this is good but usually if you're not comfortable with this it's also okay to use the preset and just manually remove the noise. Okay, so if you got confused by this it's okay if it's a two-click process instead of a one-click process. But what I, what I, what I want to show you right now is the how to just add this back to the macro. Okay, so again, we are just going to, I'm going to hit undo so that we get back to our original. We're going to go to tools, macro manager. We already have this selected. So we are now going to insert it where this, you, we had in the previous videos applied noise reduction after normalize, right? So again, insert. And this time we are searching for noise 
gate. And it's going to remember those settings, so we don't need to change, but otherwise you'll just have to be careful of the settings. I'll just make sure this has come at the right place. No, so this has actually gone up, so I want to move this down. And now I can hit save. So now it's exactly what we had done before. And now if I just go to tools, apply macro, we can simply just hit laptop microphone. And this time the job will be done and even the noise will be removed. Just one more thing. If you want to, you can also go to macro manager and you can also export this. Okay. So this will just, if you hit the export button, you can save it as a macro that let's say if you want to give it off to someone, maybe you were doing things for your client and you also want to provide them at the end uh, this particular preset, then you can just export it and it's going to export as a text file actually. So you'll be able to just give it off to someone and you can also import it. So a lot of people on the internet provide their own presets. Okay, so you can, if you find someone's preset and you like it, you like what it does to your audio, you can always hit import and that preset will come here. So that's how you use a preset or a macro inside Audacity. I hope that you liked it. I'll see you in the next video where we are still not done here because we will be taking a sample recording from a good microphone, the Blue Yeti. So for that, I'll see you in the next video.